Oh, sorry, buddy. <laughs> I've never heard you made that noise before. Come on, balls. It's just a pumpkin. Yeah, they'll figure it out. Give the rest to the chickens. Where are all my chickens? Come on, chickens. Come on, pup. What are you doing, chickens? Why are y'all inside? It's a beautiful day out there. What are you doing in here? Chicken. What are you doing, ducks? It's nicer outside. Their pen's actually working out pretty well. They're keeping that side nice and clean. And this side's doing well also. Got the pools holding most of the mess from their water bowls. A little feeding station. And then I just have that bowl in there so I can throw them some corn and scratch grains. We do have some eggs just laying around randomly. So I'll go in there and collect them. But you chickens need to go outside. Get some sunlight. I only got two eggs all of yesterday. So these chickens need to get outside. Get some sunlight. Get some grass. And uh, lay some more eggs. Come on ladies. Come on. Come on pop. What are you doing, chickens? I got you some fresh slop out here, chickens. Look. Puppy. Move. Good. Here, chickens. Open that up for them. Come on. Welcome back to Wood Acres. So while the chickens are up there enjoying their snack, we are going to be going around collecting and harvesting my gourds. I have some gourds growing on the ground that were volunteered from birds. I have gourds that I started myself and grew up the trellis. And I also have some gourds that I've had out all year long that have been drying from last year. So what we'll be doing in this video is going around collecting all the gourds that have been drying from last year's harvest, as well as harvesting all the gourds that I grew this year. We're going to start with the dried gourds that I harvested last year, and they've been sitting out as decoration ever since. Some of them broke, so they'll go to the compost. And some of them did crack as well, so I don't want to save any of those either. Any of those broke ones, I can even save the seeds out of them. But I'm going to be saving all the solid ones, even the ones that are too small for a birdhouse. Because what I plan on doing with these mainly is birdhouses, but there's going to be a lot of other crafts that I'll be able to do with these as well. So I want to save as many as I can. There's some different varieties that I've grown. I have the Chinese water bottle gourd, so it comes in a couple different shapes and forms here. But this is the birdhouse gourd, or some call it the Chinese water bottle gourd. I also have the martin gourd, which is used mainly for martin birdhouses. This one's cracked, but that'll go to the compost. This is the cannonball or bushel gourd, so it is just all round. And some of these can get really big, so you can build some nice houses out of these. And the next one we have here is an apple gourd. And this one's actually a pretty good one. That one looks like an apple. If I paint this glossy red, that'll look just like an apple, and it'll look really nice as a decoration. This one's a little small, but some of the apple gourds do get big enough to make a birdhouse out of. So first I'm going to get these all cleaned up, and then we'll go check out all the other gourds that I have dried out. So we have some more gourds, so we're going to head up to the pergola. So I have gourds everywhere. I just leave them out as decoration. I'm gonna leave these ones here because it's still fall and winter and they, hey, hey buddy, they work there. So I'm not gonna grab these ones yet. That's one of the small birds that would be inhabiting one of these houses. Here we have another little pile of dried up gourds. So I think some of these are broken. So we're gonna pick through these and get the nice ones. Here's another nice Martin gourd. It's actually a decent size for a birdhouse. We have another decent sized one here, not broken yet. And up here I can show you what a snake gourd is. This is a dried snake gourd. This one grew on the ground, so it actually grew into a circle. We have one that actually closed itself off again. This one's broken, so I'm gonna have to send this one to the compost. They do dry, kind of like balsa wood, like a really light wood. So they'll actually last a long time if you take care of them and seal them after they're already cured properly. So these ones were all grown on the ground and that's why they curved. If you do grow them off a trellis, I'll show you real quick. Never mind, it fell. So here's a straight one. Because it was growing 
right here off the trellis and it was grown straight down. So you can see how gravity affects it as it grows from a hanging position. This one did rot on the bottom so it wasn't gonna last anyway. But that goes to show you what is gonna happen to all these gourds up here. They are gonna fall onto the ground. So that's why I'm out here now before they fall because if they do fall, I don't really have enough thick enough wood chips down here to cushion the impact. They will break. So what I want to do is get these off and any of them that are still good, I'll be taking them up to the top of the barn so they can dry and cure for next year. So one thing about gourds is they are prolific. So if you grow a bunch of gourd plants, you end up with a bunch of gourds. If you give them enough warm days, you will get a lot of gourds. So we have some more apple gourds back here. Most of these ones didn't break because I piled them up. We have a bunch of apple gourds. We have some long dipper gourds. So those ones aren't too bad there. And uh, I think we have a caveman club. I think this one's supposed to be a caveman club. It just didn't get the ridges. I'll show you a better one in the food forest. Another neat thing I can show you about growing your own gourds and collecting the seeds from them, you'll get some hybrids. So this bulbous beauty is a Martin gourd bottle gourd hybrid. So it's crossed between both of them and you can see the shape that we got. A nice fat bottom with a very tapered ceiling or well, it would be a ceiling for the bird once it goes inside, but I guess a tapered top, tapered roof. But you can see how much more room the bird would have in there without the neck of the bottle. So that's actually a really nice hybrid. I wanna save some seeds out of this whenever I cut it open. And there's a fair chance that the gourd that that seed grows won't look anything like that. That's what you have to do whenever you're trying to grow hybrids. You have to pick the best one and grow the seeds from that one every year. And you should start to stabilize and get more consistent fruits. We got all the gourds collected up from last year's harvest that I'm going to be saving. I'm going to take these up to the barn and then I'm going to come back and harvest all the gourds that we grew this year. And then finally I'll take you up to the barn and show you how I'm drying, storing, and curing them. Here on the property, I grow gourds out of the pergola. That's what I built the pergola for, was to grow my gourds so that they can be up off the ground and I can see them dangling all above. But the birds decided to grow gourds in a couple other places. Right here at the pond is one of them. So this year on the back side of the waterfall, we had a volunteer gourd grow and it grew all the way down the outside rock wall into the pond here and a little bit further, as well as shooting a uh, another leg this way on the pond and then another gourd was planted by the birds right here so we had two on the waterfall and they filled up this whole area you can see some of them laying around that i already harvested and they just set out for decoration some of them did not make it so 180 days of warm weather is pretty much what you need to grow a gourd to maturity and you need it to get to maturity if you want to cure it dry it cure it and store it for later use since these were volunteers they started a little bit later than the ones that i planted up at the pergola so the gourds will look good for a while but whenever you get the frost you will see that they soften so these ones will not cure so you might think if i took them inside and didn't leave them outside in the weather they would have lasted but we have gourds from the same plant right here, actually, on the waterfall. This is actually where it grew, so I just cut it off the vine and left it right here. But this one, that one's hard, and that one's the same thing. So it grew first, and it got more time to grow to maturity, as well as this one up here in the waterfall. It also grew here. You can really hear the difference between the ones that made it and the ones that didn't. Oop, oop, oop. So the gourds that are soft and did not make it to maturity, I'm going to just send back up to the birds and they can eat them and then I'll send it to the compost after the birds are done with it. But I just gave them a big pile of food, so I'm not gonna be doing that today, but I am going to be pulling out all the hard gourds that did make it. These bushel gourds I grew down on the squash mound and they turned out really well. They're actually a really good size that I can use for a birdhouse, so that one made it too. That's really nice. Unfortunately, if you followed along and watched that harvest video where we found a very large 20 some pound gourd, bushel gourd, 
it didn't make it. It ended up rotting on the patio after a few weeks. So I'm gonna have to try next year for an owl sized bushel gourd. Here I have a nice long straight snake gourd that lasted. It's actually, if you put it here, it looks like a golf club. This one is a year old, so it's actually nice and dry and you can see how light it is, but it's still nice and firm. So I'm gonna save this one. It sounded like it, but it didn't break. Look at these ones. These ones got super fat. That is a huge base on these. And these grew right here. I just left them right where they grew. I actually have some slugs on the bottom of there, which is really no good for squash. So you want to get some slugs off if you can. But the chickens would like them. But this one's going to make a big bird really happy. And it made it. Now I want to get the gourds cut out of the pergola before they fall off and break. Now you want to leave as long a stem as you can with everything that you harvest. But I believe this is some type of variation between a caveman club and a water bottle gourd. It has ridges. But it also has a little bit weird of a shape here for the caveman club. I'll show you the caveman clubs in the food forest and you'll see the difference right away. This pergola was put in after we took down a couple of blue spruce that had blight. And since we took them down, it really opened up the view out into the road. This is before the hangar building was put in. So we needed something to block it and I needed somewhere to grow my gourds. So we built this massive structure here. It is eight feet tall and the top trellis has a cattle panel top to it. And they hold a lot of weight from the gourds because those gourds do get heavy as they're growing. And that top is probably about 350 400 square feet of growing space up there for the leaves i typically plant along the outside of the pergola and you can see the remnants of the gourds here i just train them up the lattice and they go up to the top but once they reach the top i just let them go crazy and they can stretch across the whole thing this year wasn't as impressive as last year so i've put up a couple pictures from last year but we still got to cover the whole top this year, which was nice, and we did get some gourds out of it. Your plans don't always turn out while gardening, so it's always nice to have some volunteers drop by birds. So we'll go over and check out one of the volunteer plants that the birds laid in the food forest and see how it produced. The food forest is layered in a beautiful, healthy layer of dried maple leaves, and we have a bunch of caveman clubs. These ones grew on the ground, so you can see the nice hook that the neck gets, but that thing's soft. We have a couple over here that are bigger, and these ones are hard, so that's that's pretty nice. We'll pull that out of there. Ooh, look at the neck on that one. That has a nice curve to it. This one as well. We'll pull these out. They both look nice and solid. This one over here is massive. Look at this. Wow, that's a big in there. That is huge. It's like 10, 12 inches. But you can see the structure on this. This is why we call it the caveman club or dinosaur egg. It has all these thick, deep ridges going through it. And if you grow it from the pergola, you would have a nice straight arm on this and it would make a really nice caveman club or a nice club to whack something with. I have a couple over here that I just hung in the tree from last year. You can see they dried out real nice and they're light and hollow rattle them that means it's all dried inside and that is a cured gourd so that's what you're looking for i made one into a birdhouse and hung it up there and it's been doing good some of these are still stuck on the vine so you want to get a nice clean cut look at the size difference this is what i was saying is a caveman club hybrid grown from the pergola with a nice straight neck and this is the actual caveman club this is a volunteer seed, probably from the one that I hung in the bird or hung in the maple tree as a birdhouse it last year, and it came out a lot more true to shape. We got a bunch lying around here. That one's good, good, good. So I'm gonna go through all these leaves, start pulling them out. What's good, and uh, load them up into the little barrel. said it before in another video 
Well, you can see down here, that's a bee's nest. And I believe this is the white bald-faced hornets. And the birds got this nest because we had three in this tree. And I've shown it before, but I'll show it when we get out of the underneath the tree. There's a massive nest in here. Check out this nest. That one is huge. We had two smaller ones lower in the trees that the birds seem to have already gotten. And they haven't got the big one yet. Nature's beautiful. Hey chickens, you working on your pumpkins? Huh ladies? What up mumbles? What are you doing in the barn? Come out and enjoy the weather. These gourds are so much heavier than the dry ones. Looks like I got nine of these big ones. Look at the neck on this one. It's gotta be close to 18 inches, two feet. These are gonna be nice. So I have dried gourds just laying pretty much everywhere around the barn here. The ones I just brought up, I threw in these barrels, the ones with necks and the rounder ones in this one. That'll work just fine because they're already dried. If they have moisture in them and they're not rattling already, you don't want to do that. They will mold and then they'll end up rotten. So for all these fresh gourds, you want to go ahead and get as much dirt off as you can because that's just holding moisture. But these ones are going to go up here on this rack in the top of the barn. This rack on some barrels. And that'll give them nice airflow all the way around. Now I just need to fit all these up here on this rack and they'll get plenty of nice airflow. You want to leave gaps in between them. And if you don't have empty space underneath them, you would have to come up here and you want to rotate them. You don't want them sitting on the same spot all year long because these gourds need to dry. They have a lot of moisture in them and the moisture is going to come out in every direction. And the gourds will start to mold as they dry and cure because they have all that moisture in them and it's getting slowly released. It won't hurt the gourd at all and it'll leave a nice actual unique pattern on the gourd whenever it's finished. But you want to keep them away from people and kids and even your animals from sniffing them whenever they're that moldy. It is November now, so by the time about March, April, maybe even May comes along, these gourds will be dry and they will have that moldy pattern on them. Now it won't look like this because these are already cleaned. So in the spring, whenever they're nice and dry, and you can hear that rattle, you can take them out, throw them in a bucket of water, even soapy water is fine, a little bit warm, and let them soak for maybe three to five minutes. That'll help soften up all that mold. Then you come in with a little scrubby brush that you use in the kitchen and just take all the mold off. And then that you'll have a nice smooth patterned gourd. You can clear coat it, paint it, etch it, burn it, sketch it, do whatever you want to these things. Cut a hole in it and send it up into a tree and the bird will enjoy it for the whole year. They will last longer if they're sealed, but to tell you the truth, if you put that thing in direct sunlight all summer long, it's going to get destroyed. I had one that I etched out for hours. It had really nice designs all over it. I spent a lot of time on it. It was like a six and a half hour etching session and I uh, sealed it, but it did not last in the sun. The bird moved into it, a vine grew around it. I couldn't move the gourd and the sun just completely destroyed it. So I don't have that gourd anymore. So if you want to make them last as long as possible, you do want to keep them out of the direct sun. sniffing all right so here you can see all the caveman clubs fit and none of them are touching they all have an air gap around the sides and the bottom i also got all the hybrids over here and i put them on some old wagon sides that we're not using anymore just to help lift them off the surface and get airflow all the way around them. all right so if you made it this far in the video then you will get the helpful tip that will keep your gourds from rotting as they dry out I did tell you to clean off the mud to keep the moisture off of the gourd, but what would really help is if you take some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and just do a nice light coating around the whole gourd. That works for pumpkins as you carve them for Halloween and it also works for these gourds. That'll get a lot of the bacteria off the skin of the gourd and give it its best chance of drying clean. And that's all for this one. If you want to see more from Wood Acres, go in the description down below. I have three other YouTube channels that I post to almost just as much as this one. I also have an Amazon affiliate link if you're doing any shopping. As well as check out my Instagram with a bunch of beautiful photos that I can't fit into the videos. You can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.